Hi, I'm Georgia, better known as Little Pet Channel, and today I am here with Jeremy, who is a veterinary consultant at Bransby Horses. So today we are going to have a look at taking the temperature, and this is Jules, who is going to be our, our um, horse for the day. Kelsey's got the equipment that we'll need. So Kelsey, can I ask you just to bring those to me? So, taking the temperature. So the things that we're going to need are, we're going to need a thermometer. The other thing which we're going to use are some latex gloves, um, just from a health and safety point of view, because obviously you're going to be working at the back end of, of jewels there. And we're also going to use some lubricant just to make it a rather more pleasant procedure for, for jewels as well. Fabulous. So I guess the first thing to talk about, Georgia, is health and safety. Okay. So um, we know Jules very well. Uh, we know that she's hopefully going to be very compliant and very good for us today. If it's a horse that you don't know, then I think you would want to be very wary. Yeah. Um, or you certainly need to speak to the owners and so on about what they're like in terms of taking the temperature. I think the ideal setup probably is to be at least two of you um, doing this. We're going to be spoiled today because there's three of us. Um, I, I guess realistically some horse owners will be doing this on their own and that's fine as long as they know the horse well. Ideally if they've got other people around on the yard which will often be the case and I guess the other important thing is to have a mobile phone with you as well if you're doing this on your own just so if you had a problem you could call somebody to, to give you a hand. If you've got somebody with you, then the ideal thing is for them to hold the horse whilst you take their temperature. If you haven't, then I guess tying Jules up would be fine, perhaps keeping her occupied with a hay net or something like that as well whilst you, whilst you do this. Thank you. First thing we need to do is just to make sure that our thermometer is working. Okay. So I'm just going to switch that on. And yep, that's come up. So that's great. The next thing to do is just to put a little bit of lubricant on the end of the of here. That's there we go. And I'm going to give that to you, Georgia. Thank you. Next thing to do is just to gently put your hand onto her hindquarters so she knows that you're there. And then we're just going to gently lift her tail up as well. Is this one that needs to be held to take the temperature? Uh, yes. Okay. Good girl. And then we're just going to just very gently slide the thermometer into her rectum. And we want to keep it there for about 30 seconds, after which time the thermometer will beep and tell us that it's, uh, it's taking the temperature. We want to insert the thermometer around three or four centimetres into the rectum and it's important that we just gently push it to one side of the rectum so it's touching the rectal wall rather than in the middle of the rectum. What we don't want to do is to place the tip of the thermometer against any faecal material that's inside the rectum because that will have a much lower temperature than she does. Okay. And what have we got? So we've got a reading of 37.3, which is pretty much bang on normal. Yeah. At what temperature would you start getting a little bit concerned that you'd class it as raised? So all horses are slightly different in terms of where they will normally sit. So once we've finished, obviously we just want to clean our thermometer so it's all ready for the next time. So we're just gonna use some disinfectant wipes for that. Brilliant. So obviously Jules is very good and she was very good for the procedure. If they sort of show that they're upset or anything, do you just stop straight away? Yes, I would do. I think if, if they seem to be distressed or uncomfortable with what you're doing, I would just withdraw the thermometer, just give them a few moments, maybe give them a bit of a fuss and then try again. If they're still resistant, then I wouldn't pursue it. Okay. So why is it important that we take temperature when we're you know, possibly looking at strangles? Again, it's a good question. One of the first things that we'll see actually in terms of the clinical signs is an elevated temperature. Um, so 
if we're taking the temperature on a regular basis, we'll notice that the temperature started to rise, which might start to give us a clue that something's going on. As the di disease progresses, often we'll see some of the other clinical signs become much more obvious, things like a nasal discharge um, and the horse becoming dull and stopping eating and so on. But as I say, often the very first thing that you'll see is that rise in temperature, which will just give you a heads up that something's not right. There is also a form of strangles called atypical strangles, where we really don't see very many of the other classic clinical signs, swollen lymph nodes, nasal discharge and so on, but even in those cases we'll almost always see an elevated temperature. So again, if we're in a yard where we know that strangles is spreading, mm. it's a really good clue that your horse has actually been infected. Brilliant, so it's really important then that we do that. It is, yeah, absolutely. So we've seen how we do it. If you can just give us the step-by-step -step instructions on how to give a temperature. Absolutely. So the first thing to think about really is health and safety. So we need to know our horse, as we said before. We need to approach the horse carefully. Ideally, we want to have somebody else there to help us as well, or we want our horse to be tied up and occupied whilst we're doing it. Second thing is we just need to have the right equipment. So we need a thermometer. We've talked about the different types of thermometer. We want to have some gloves because obviously we're working at a dirty end of the horse. Um, and we want to have some lubricant as well to make it as pleasant a um, situation as possible for you, don't we, Jules? Then we need to just very carefully approach the horse, lift the tail, insert the thermometer around three or four centimeters into the rectum, and we want to make sure that we're pushing very gently up against the rectal wall. We're not touching any feces, which as we said, will have a much lower temperature. It'll bleep and tell us when it's ready. Then we just gently withdraw it and read the temperature. Once we've done that, we just want to clean the thermometer so it's ready for the next time. Good girl. <laughs>